Hello everyone, it is Trigger here of course, and today I'm just doing a quick little video on the oil refineries in Mindorio. Because just like Factorio, people tend to struggle with oil in Mindorio. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right on into it. Um, to get started, the first thing you'll need is some seismic charges. Uh, because in order to mine oil, you have to know where oil's at. So let's go ahead and get one. So in the empty items menu in the tools and weapons section, you can find a seismic charge in there. You can figure out the crafting recipe by left clicking on it and seeing it here. Uh, some servers might have changed it, but in the default, this is what it would be. So for now, once you have a seismic charge, go ahead and hold it out and you're going to see some particles appearing. This is a resource zone viewer. So a resource zone is a zone that can contain resources. Um, it's kind of like a slime chunk almost, but just a bigger area. It's not just a chunk. So in this case, um, there is an oil zone right here already. It has 10,000 oil in it. This is going to be the one I'm going to be using. In order to find a resource zone, all you do is go ahead and walk around a chunk. You'll see some red here. That's because I've already tried scanning here, or it's too close to a resource zone already. So let's go ahead and spread out. Let's see if we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can find one. I'm not going to spend too long trying to find one because it can be a bit of a task sometimes. Uh, resource zones um, can be found in specific areas. So oil, for example, has a higher likelihood to be found in deserts, badlands, and deep oceans. In this case, I just found some raw copper. And there is 837 raw copper in this uh, chunk here, or this resource zone, which is about 13 stacks. It's pretty nice. Uh, okay, so if we go back here, um, we're going to go back to the oil, though, because this video is all about oil. So we're going to go ahead and grab a pump to get started, because in order to get oil, you have to pump it out. So we're going to go into the logistics and grab a pump. You'll need to craft one if uh, you can, uh, or purchase one, or however the server gets it. There is a recipe for it. You can left-click on it in this menu to see what the recipe is. Okay, so now that we have the pump, we're going to need two things. We're going to need... Uh, to get the oil first, and we're going to need somewhere to process it. So let's go back into the empty items menu and go to the manufacturing section. And there, you're going to see something called an oil refinery. Let's go ahead and grab that. The oil refinery, you can place down anywhere. I'm just going to place it right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab some piping blocks. So, just like in the Steam video, if you haven't seen that yet, you can go ahead and grab a uh, diorite wall, andesite, or granite wall. These walls and polished versions are used for liquid transportation. It must be one of those three walls. You can't use cobblestone, you can't use deep slate, or bricks. It has to be andesite, diorite, or uh, granite. As they give value to those blocks. So you must use those as your piping blocks. So let's go ahead and get going here. So let's go ahead and put a block here and get a pump here. This is going to let this pump gather water. You can see it says connected liquid water and it will gather some water every three seconds. And it's going to gather 100 water per action, which is every three seconds. And it says no connected pipe, diorite wall above. Uh, in this case, we're using diorite. Uh, let's go ahead and put one down. So now if we look at this, it's not going to bark at us. It does have a liquid pipe, but it's not connected to anything. So let's go ahead and connect it to this. I'm going to draw out a pipeline. And we're going to go ahead and put a polished diorite above it. That's because these simply act as an output and allow liquids to move through the pipe here. They don't allow liquids to leave the pipe. In order for the liquids to leave the pipe, you need to use a polished version of the block that you're using, which in this case is diorite for me. That allows the water to go from in here into this device. If I open up the oil refinery, you'll see that I have some water um, not being stored in here yet. You might have heard it go off, but you're not going to see it in here quite yet because um, we still need to actually do something else with the water. But for now we have a water set up to our oil refinery, uh, which is kind of weird. I should have started with the oil. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and dig up some, let's go and drill up some oil. So let's go ahead and put some oil. Let's just do oil right here. Now we have oil coming out of this pipe because if we open it up, it's going to say no connected pipe above. Okay, let's go and put that down. And now we see it says current liquid oil. Great. That's because over here, this was had water below it, so it's allowed to gather water. Make sure that your water also has at least 25 blocks in it that it's connected to, or else it won't get a full water output. Now for our oil, let's go ahead and connect this. I'm going to teach you guys another little trick, too. Let's go ahead and grab a different wall. We're going to use granite, actually. Just like colored conveyors, these pipes do not mix. So if we wanted to make sure that water never traveled through this pipe, 
then we can simply make sure to use a different type of uh, piping material. In this case, we're going to use granite. So let's go ahead and draw a pipeline over. And we're going to go ahead and add a junction or a connection right here. Now we're going to be able to pump oil from there into the oil refinery. Okay, now I hear the oil refinery chugging away. You can see it's converting 30 oil at a time and breaking it down into three different types of oils because by default the recipe is set to oil cracking. So it cracks 30 oil into 10 heavy oil, 10 light oil, and 10 petroleum. Um, now that we have access to petroleum, you could already set this up to using a petrol engine. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a steam engine out of the power section, or a petrol engine rather. We're going to put the petrol engine right next to it. And we're going to go ahead and use uh, granite again. Actually, let's go ahead and use a different one. Let's go ahead and use uh, andesite. Why not? Just to keep it visually appealing. So here's some andesite. This pipe, again, will not allow liquid to travel through it because this only allow, or it does not let liquid leave it. So in order for it to leave it, we have to make sure we give it the ability to do so by replacing this with a polished andesite block. Now, you'll see the petroleum engine will turn on and is now gathering petroleum. If we go and look in here, we'll see that the petroleum has been completely depleted from here. This is an issue because we need the petroleum to be able to continuously be made in order for the petrol engine to go. But right now, there's no space for the petrol, so we need to be able to deal with the other liquids in order to fix this problem. So let's go ahead and undo our water connection here that I showed. Because we don't need water at this oil refinery. Instead, we need to break down the heavy oil inside of this one and the light oil. To do so, let's go ahead and add a nether connection. First, let's deal with the simpler one. Let's deal with the light oil first. So let's go and put a connection here. And then we're going to go ahead and grab a another granite wall here and a junction here. This is going to allow the light oil or some of the oil to move over, but let's change the recipe by left clicking the device info here like that. And you can see here we have a bunch of recipes we can pick from. It tells you the exact ratios and everything you'll be using here. So let's go ahead and switch this from oil cracking to uh, light oil cracking. This will require 10 light oil and 10 water to produce 10 petroleum. You'll see here now that the device info looks a little different. For the first input, we need light oil, and for the second input, we need water. So we need to add two inputs to this. So light oil is already being provided from this oil refinery. So you can see it has 100 light oil in it right now, but so does this one. So it's completely backed up. So now we just need to make sure to get some water in it. So let's go ahead and run this line over. I'm going to go in and clean this up a little bit too. And we're just going to do it like this. Now our water has access to go in here. And currently it's telling us we have no space for petroleum. So how do we solve that problem? Well, we move the petroleum into our petroleum engine, of course. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go and run another pipe. We're going to stick with the andesite theme as being our petroleum pipe. And what we can do is we can actually hook in to this junction. We don't need to use a duplicate. We can save the space there a little bit. So now all our petroleum has moved over. All of our light oil is going to get cracked down, which is awesome. Uh, let's go look at our other thing here. <clears throat> so we're going to see right now we have no light oil stored in this one, but in here we're going to have light oil, but now we ran out. Well, how in the world are we going to keep this thing running if we keep running out of petroleum? Well, you might have noticed we still have heavy oil. So how do we deal with the heavy oil? Well, simple. We need to crack that down as well. So now we're going to add in a nether oil refinery. I know, crazy. So since this uh, oil cracking produces 10 oil, 10 heavy oil, we need to be able to crack it down. So we're going to need to add another refinery. We're going to click this and change the recipe to heavy oil cracking. Now with heavy oil as, as what we're going to be cracking, we're going to go in and put down a new type of pipe. Let's go in and run a pipe to this. Not a new type of pipe, I'm sorry, just another pipe connection. So now the heavy oil can go in and exit here and go into here. So we've got all the heavy oil, but we still require water. Let's go ahead and give us a water connection. Now the problem here is that we don't have a connection point to this. So what we're going to do actually is change this to diorite. 
which is a nice point to bring up a little tip. Unlike Factorio, liquids can flow through each other. That means you don't need to worry about um, mixing water in oil. Uh, this is just a quality of life thing, and it might not make any realism sense, but it's a game, who cares? It's meant to be just a little more simple. So right now it's going to tell us that we have no space for light oil. Well, what could we do with that light oil that we're cracking, uh, that we're getting from the heavy oil? Well, we could crack it, of course. Now, we could send the light oil into this oil refinery, but this oil refinery is already dedicated to cracking the light oil produced from here, so it's probably a good idea that we just make another oil refinery. Which sounds a bit silly, but we're going to do it anyways. So we're going to go ahead and put one on this connection, so we have a water connection to this oil refinery already to save us a little pipe spaghetti here. So we're going to go ahead and lead the light oil out of here, but let's go ahead and change this first into light oil cracking. So now this will crack light oil. And we're going to go ahead and draw a pipe connection, but we're going to connect it to the water line, which sounds crazy, but it's okay because liquids don't mix. And so now that we have this in here, the light oil cracking can crack petroleum, which you can see we have 100 petroleum in here already, so we need to move that petroleum. How do we move the petroleum out? Well, we go ahead and draw it over here to the, the petroleum engine. So how are we going to do that? Let's just do a pipe connection here and here. Now, this is fully connected. We should see some of the petroleum start going out. However, I have a feeling that we're producing too much petroleum, actually, for the system to actually delete all of it. Which is definitely the case. Which is actually really good, because now we can actually just add another petroleum engine. Let's go ahead and grab a wire tool, too, so we can see the amount of power it's generating. Only 10 power. Oh, that's because we need to add some grindstones, just like a boiler. If you haven't seen the boiler video, in order to get maximum output out of these devices, you need to make sure you put grindstones in the outs on the left and right side of their facing direction. So I can only put one here because the other face is here. So we're going to go ahead and delete this and move it here. And put one here and here. And now it has the ability to vent out more of the steam that's or whatever it's doing. It's magic. Now to hold out our wire tool, we're getting 30 power. That is a lot of power. And something that's really nice about this setup is that we can definitely fit way more steam or way more uh, petroleum engines in this. So let's go ahead and change this setup slightly. And let's go ahead and add two more petroleum engines to this. And just like that, we are now producing 90 power from just three petrol engines. And I'm pretty sure with the ratios off this, you could have a fourth on here, but it would tick on and off. And so what you would end up needing to do is make more. The, the larger your setup and the more oil processing you're doing, the uh, the more efficient you can get. Because I think this produces enough light oil in to or petrol oil in total to run 3.3 steam or uh, petrol engines. So if we scaled up to like four times the amount, we'd be able to get an extra steam engine off this. And you can see a lot of these devices do use a bit of power. So right now we're using 10, 20, 30, 40 power right now in oil processing. Um, but I have a good feeling we could maybe fit some more in here. Let's go ahead and see. So I just described the ratios, but even for me, the developer, it's been some time since I've worked with oil. So my ratios might be off. Let's go ahead and check on our petrol and see how we're doing. No petrol here. Light oil. Let's see. Are we have any flickering going on? We do have some flickering. So yeah. Anyways, uh, we're using like 30, let's see, 40 power here. Uh, but keep in mind, there's definitely some inefficiencies going on in here. So right now with the original setup, we are only net gaining like, let's say, 90 minus 40. We're only net gaining like, you know, 50 power here. But keep in mind... Really, the only thing I'm using is water and oil, which to me, oil doesn't really have much of a purpose uh, besides using some of the other recipe crafts. So really, I'm not gaining 50 power from basically a virtual resource, um, which is really nice. And you can see that these are actually flickering on and off themselves, so it's not even a continuous draw of power. Um, so realistically, we're actually probably using a bit less than that. Um, and keep in mind too, like if we open this up, we have full light oil here full light oil. How about the heavy oil here? Yeah, 
one where we're good. We actually do have a bit of backlog on light oil here, so we can actually squeeze out... If we crack this down, we could actually get um, a bit more petroleum as well. So, um, anyways, yeah, that's how you do pe petrol power. Um, I'm sure that the power setup here might look a little weird. Uh, 50 power might not sound like it's worth a whole lot, but keep in mind that you don't have to belt over any coal. The only thing you really need to get this system going is a bit of power to jumpstart your, like a combustion engine, just to jumpstart everything. Maybe two to jumpstart everything, and then once it's all started, you don't need it anymore. Um, and then the system will supply itself with power. And then expanding on this is, is very easy. Um, obviously, this looks like a spaghetti mess, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? You can come up with your own clever design and your own really compact versions of this, because I'm sure you can figure something out that's better than this. Um, I will say, uh, with this video, these numbers will likely change on the uh, power output cost here to make this a bit more effective. But even still, with it only being a net gain of 50 power per setup, keep in mind there's still a bit of waste here. Like I said, we could probably get, an, if you at scale, you'll get a bit more efficiency out of this. This is not a very efficient setup by any means. Um, yeah. So, anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys have any other video requests that you want me to make, please let me know in the comments below. There's also a wiki page that you can find too. Um, which is on the resource page. That'll also be in the link in below. So you can go check that out if you want to find any more information about this uh, with oil refinery or oil refinery or anything else uh, mine's oil related. Um, the, I spent quite a bit of time making sure that the wiki has a good a bit of info on it. And you can even try to submit your own changes to it and I can approve them on there if they look like they're accurate. Um, anyways, yeah, that's it. I'll uh, let you guys go. Thanks for watching.